Hello, my friends and fellow modern game developers. My name is Chris Woodley, also known as Eric's Turtle in the modern game community. And today I'm just going to be doing a quick video on how to set up your development environment to create games using modern game with Visual Studio Code instead of the full Visual Studio IDE. Uh, this question comes up sometimes in the Discord. I've had a few users reach out and ask me how to do this, how to set up their development environment with VS Code. Uh, so just thought making a quick video would be a really good way to, to explain that and, and have a, a, a visual guide uh, to, to go, to go along with, with everything. Um, so with that, again, it's gonna be a short video. So let's just, let's just jump right into this. Right. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do in order to set up our development environment, uh, is to install the .NET SDK. So we're going to go to this website here, uh, which I will include the link to this down in the description of the video below. And here we're going to download the .NET 8.0 SDK. Uh, as of the time of recording this video, .NET 8.0 is the current version of the .NET SDK. Uh, I will point out that Monogame itself targets .NET 6 currently. Uh, there is work being done in the Monogame repository right now to bring it up to the point where it's targeting .NET 8. That has not been released yet. Um, so right now it is targeting .NET 6, but regardless, it is perfectly fine for you as the user to go ahead and just download the .NET 8 SDK. Uh, you don't have to download the .NET 6 SDK to match it. If you would like to do that, you're more than welcome to. You can click this all .NET versions uh, link down here and go through there to download the .NET 6 SDK. Um, but you don't need to. I do recommend and encourage you to just download the .NET 8.0 SDK, uh, which is the current version. So we're going to click on that going to take us to the download page and it takes a couple of seconds to download or at least a couple of seconds for me. And once that finishes, we'll just click on the download. Come on, finish. There we go. We're going to click on it. It's going to, to ask us if we want to run. We do want to run, click install. Yes. And then through the magic of video editing, it is going to instantly install for me. And there we go, instantly installed. Uh, we now have the .NET SDK 8.0.1.0 or 1.1 SDK uh, version installed. So we can click close and just to, to, to validate, to verify it's installed, uh, you can open up your Windows menu either by clicking on it or hitting the Windows key on your keyboard and then type in uh, command prompt and open the command prompt application. And then from here, we can type in .NET double hyphen info. And if we do that and it's installed correctly, we'll see all of our uh, .NET info from the installation. So we can see .NET SDK, we get the version, the commit number, all that good stuff. So from here we know it's installed, it's set up. We're good to go on the .NET SDK part. So let's close that command prompt. The next part step is to uh, download and install the Visual Studio Code editor itself. So we'll go to the website for that. Again, the link for this will be included in the description of the video below. And then when you're here, you'll just uh, click the download for, uh, for me, since I'm on windows, you download it for windows. If you're on Linux or you're on Mac, uh, you'll just download it for your operating system there. But since this video is, is being done on windows, I'm going to click download for windows. Uh, so we click that starts the download for us. Takes a second to download, just like the SDK. We're going to click to open it to install, hit run. Brings up the installer. Here we go. You can read through the terms and agreement if you want to. I'm going to hit accept. Once you're done, hit accept or you accept the agreement. Hit next. Keep the default location to install. Hit next. When you get to this screen right here, I'm going to highly suggest uh, or recommend that the add open with code action to Windows Explorer file context menu and the add open with code action to Windows Explorer directory context menu are checked. These are two really nice quality, quality of life features uh, to use when you have VS Code installed. Basically what they do is, let's say you have a folder open on your desktop or on your computer, you can right click inside that folder and there'll be a context menu option to open with code. And then it'll open that folder up in VS Code for you. Or you can right click on a file and then in the context menu, there'll be an action to open that file in VS Code. And it's just a quick way to open directories or files in VS Code without having to open VS code first and then go file open and then go 
searching for the file or directory to open and, and doing it that way. They're just really nice features to have. They're not required. You don't have to check them. I do recommend having them checked though. Uh, regardless of having them checked or not, I do highly recommend that you keep this add to path uh, checked. Uh, that way you can um, start code from a terminal or command line, um, which we can get into that later, but I do recommend having that one checked. Um, so once you get done setting up your stuff on this page, next we get our um, preview of what's being done. We're going to click install and then through the magic of video editing, it's going to instantly install for me. And just like that, it's instantly installed. Um, so from here we have the launch Visual Studio code already checked for us. We can leave that checked, hit finish. It's going to launch VS code. I'm going to maximize the window here and there we have it. VS code is installed. Um, if you want to, you can go ahead right now, pause the video and play around with what's on this welcome screen, uh, set up different uh, themes if you want, do all that stuff, go for it, knock yourself out. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to continue on by closing this welcome screen. Uh, so the next step we need to do, we, we need to finish setting up VS Code. Uh, the next thing we need to do is install the extensions in VS Code to work with C Sharp. Um, VS Code by itself is really just a glorified text editor. That's all it is. It's just something to edit text. But through the power of extensions, it allows us to work with different file types like C Sharp uh, files um, to write code. And those extensions just make it phenomenally easier to write the code versus just having a standard basic text editor to do it. So over here on the left in VS Code, this is called your action bar. Over here at the bottom, this bottom one is called extensions. So we can click that. And then in the search box, you're just going to type C sharp. I'm going to expand this out a little bit and you'll see at the top, there are two different ones. There's the C sharp dev kit and the C sharp one, which just says base language support for C sharp. Um, the C sharp dev kit is the newest one. Installing that one will also install the other one. Uh, regardless of which one you choose, you do need to have the base language support when installed. I will highly recommend uh, that you do install the C Sharp dev kit and not just the base language support. The dev kit adds a ton of really nice quality of life features, uh, such as getting, uh, you can see down here, you'll get a uh, project system and solution explorer, which from there you can right click and tell it to build or run the project or debug the project without having to go through and set up all those like different launch tasks and, um, uh, run setting files for VS code. If you're familiar with that, if you're not, don't worry about it. Um, but it's just, it's just really nice. It makes it a, a, a lot easier to work with C sharp in VS code. So I do recommend installing the C sharp dev kit. So we're going to click install on that. And while it's installing, I'll go over some of the other benefits you're going to get. Uh, and these are going to come from the base language support extension as well. Uh, so we're going to get a language server processor, which is going to allow our C sharp files when we're writing code to have IntelliSense. Uh, it's going to give us syntax highlighting, uh, the C sharp analyzers, which will tell us where there's errors in our code as we're writing code. Um, so having these extensions installed is just going to give us all that. Um, and for the most part, your experience while writing C sharp code is going to feel sort of similar to how it feels in visuals in full visual studio. Uh, only you're going to be using VS code. So, <laughs> Uh, but it does take a few minutes to install. So while that's installing, I'm going to snap my fingers and through the magic of video editing, it's automatically installed like that. <laughs> cool. Now we have VS code set up. So let's close the extension tab there. And we're going to close this welcome tab because I don't, I don't need that up. Um, now we have one last thing we need to set up in order to get started making games with mono game in VS code. And that is to install the mono game templates themselves. The templates are basically a, a, a set of templates that when we want to create a new mono game project, let's say we want to create the cross platform, uh, desktop GL mono game project. Um, we can, we will we'll have that template installed. We can invoke the command to create a new project with that template and it scaffolds the project for us to give us the game one CS file, the content file, um, the icons and, and everything already preset up for us as a base project. So we can take that and start making our game. 
So to do that, there's a command that we're gonna use uh, to install those templates. And we can get that command from the Monogame website. So if we go to the Monogame website, click on documentation, go to the documentation hub, and then we can go to getting started, setting up your development environment. And then since we're on Windows, I'm gonna click Windows. And I'm gonna click on this alternative um, heading over here, which is gonna bring us down here. And this is the command that we're gonna use, .NET new install monogame.templates.csharp. And this just installs the monogame C sharp templates into the .NET new, um, the, the .NET new section. I'll, I'll show you what that is in a second. Um, so with that out of the way, uh, we now need to come back over to VS Code. We need to open a terminal in VS Code. So to open a terminal in VS Code, you can either hit Control tilde on your keyboard, like this, which will open up a terminal. Or if you don't use the keyboard shortcut, you can click on View, and then go to Terminal here at the bottom. Boom, there we go, open the terminal. By default, it's gonna open the, I believe it defaults to using PowerShell. If you don't want PowerShell to be your default terminal, what you can actually do is I'm gonna close this terminal. You can hit Control Shift P, and this is going to open up your command palette. And then from here, you can type in terminal, uh, select default. Yep. And then click on the terminal select default profile. And you can choose which of the terminals you have installed. Like I have Git bash installed. Um, you can choose which one you want to use as your default terminal. I prefer Git bash. I have that installed. So that's what I'm going to choose is Git bash. Um, if you want to choose command prompt, or if you want to stick with PowerShell, that's fine. It's completely up to you, whichever one you want to use. Um, so now that I've done that, I'm going to open up my terminal and you'll see here it opens up in uh, to get bash terminal. I can see bash here and let me zoom this in a bit. So it's a little bit easier to probably see on the video. And now we need to enter that command that we saw on the mono game website. So let's all tab over. Let's grab that command. I'm going to copy. We're going to come over and we're going to paste the command in. Oh, I forgot the D at the front. We're going to paste the command in and we're going to hit enter and it's going to install the templates and it's just going to be beautiful. Nope, it's not going to do that. Of course, there's going to be an error. Why would there not be an error? Um, you might not actually get this error. If you don't get this error, that's fantastic. If you do get this error, that's okay. The reason this error happens is because we just installed .NET. Um, and for some reason, Visual Studio, the first Visual Studio code, the first time it opens, it doesn't actually get the updated path variable. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, so if you get this error that the .NET command cannot be found, simple fix. All you need to do is close Visual Studio Code and then reopen it. <laughs> That's it. That's all you need to do. Uh, so now that we have VS Code reopened, we have our terminal open still. I'm going to clear that out. We're going to enter the command again, .NET new install monogame.templates.csharp hit enter it's going to give you this telemetry thing because uh, it's the first time we've run .NET since installing it um, and then it's going to install the templates for us now you're going to notice right now for the current version of monogame which is 3.8.1.303 you're going to get this warning and this error um, that a template uh, is not supported or doesn't exist and it's going to be the UWP core app that error is fine. You can ignore that. Um, the UW, that UWP template is being removed in future versions of Monogame. Uh, right now, you'll just get that error when you install the templates, but it's completely fine. Just, just ignore it. <laughs> um, but down below, you'll see the actual templates it does install. And it gives us the Android, the content pipeline extension, the cross-platform desktop application, game library, iOS application, the shared library project, the Windows desktop application and the Windows Universal XAML application. So these are the project, the template names on the left and right here under this short name column. These are the actual uh, command that we'll use to create those. For the most part, I, I only use the desktop GL one. If you're going to use Android or pipeline ones, you know, whichever one you're creating, you obviously use that short name. Um, but if you ever forget what that short name is, if you ever need that short name, um, you can type in .NET new, I believe it's double hyphen list. Yeah, that's 
So dine in new double hyphen list. And this will give you a list of all of your templates that you have installed. And you can come in here and find the mono game ones. And there's the short name over here again. So now that we have that, and we have the MG desktop GL, that's the actual one we're going to create. So let's clear my terminal. And I'm going to uh, go to my desktop. I'm going to see these in my desktop. And then here, I'm going to create um, a new folder. So make directory. Or actually, let's not do this through the terminal. Let's do this like actual Windows, Windows style. Uh, so we'll go to my desktop. Let's close VS Code. Uh, we'll go to my desktop. We'll make a new folder. And we'll call this my awesome game. Obviously, you call it whatever you want to call it. But I'm calling it my awesome game. And because we had those checkboxes for open in VS Code, like I mentioned before, when we were setting it up, I can open this folder, right click, and go to open with code right here. And that's just going to open this folder for me automatically in VS Code, which is really nice. That's why I said it's really nice and handy to have that feature. Uh, sometimes you're going to get this pop up that says, Do you trust the authors of this file or folder? This is a security feature. Obviously, I created this folder. I do trust myself sometimes. <laughs> So I'm going to click yes on that. Uh, but if this is from a folder or something you downloaded, obviously, you know, make your best decision on whether you want to trust that folder or not. Uh, but now that I have the folder open, if I open my terminal now, we'll see that the terminal is actually opened inside of my folder. And I can do the PWD command to see that it's uh, inside that folder. So from here, to actually create a new monogame project, what you're going to do is type .NET new and then you're going to type the short name for the project type you want to create in this instance i want to create a desktop gl project so that's going to be mg desktop gl and this is enough you can just type this and this is enough uh, but I, I prefer to name my projects so if you want to name them you can do the name flag which is just hyphen n and then give it a name so my awesome game and then hit enter and there we go. It has created our monogame project for us, just like that. Uh, now it is recommended because we're using the C Sharp Dev Kit extension in VS Code to also create a solution file. So to do that, you can do .NET new SLN, and we can name that again my awesome game. And then once we've done that, we can add the project we just created to the solution file by doing .NET solution add and then we'll give it the path to the milesome game milesome game .cs project we're just going to give it the path of that cs project there we hit enter it adds that to our solution file and then we can open up our command palette right here and we can go to open uh, we can type open solution and we can choose right here net open solution it's going to activate the extension, you'll see a bunch of things pop up. If this is your first time using it, it's going to ask you to sign in. You don't have to, you can just click close. That's perfectly fine. Um, but it's going to download all the necessary things it needs. It's going to set itself up. I uh, just give you a few seconds. And once it's fully set up, you'll see right here, this solution explorer panel. Uh, and so now you can use this as solution explorer, just like you would in visual studio to do all the things you need to do to, to work on your game. If you want to add like a new class file, you can click add new file and you can choose the file type you want to add. Uh, if you want to debug the project or run the project, you can right click it, go to debug, start new instance, which I'll do here right now, just to show it to you. Uh, that's going to do a build and it's going to start the instance as a debug instance where you can set breakpoints in the code file if you wanted to, and it will stop on those breakpoints. Uh, there we go. We have the awesome mono game cornflower blue window. And just to show the debugging, uh, let's open up our game1cs file. Move this down a little bit. And I'm just going to put a breakpoint here on the, um, the exit statement in the update. Just put a breakpoint there. Right click, debug, start new instance. Let it build and start that instance. And then you'll see we'll get that breakpoint uh, right there. So there we go, breakpoint, and we can come in here. We can do all the normal things that you would usually do in Visual Studio with breakpoints. We have, you know, we can hover over to get the values of um, of our objects. We have a variable panel over here where we can do all of our debugging things. We can 
come in here and, and add things like add to watch so we have something set and watch if you're used to doing that with debugging um we have our call stack we can go through all the same things that you would get in visual studio while debugging you'll get here as well uh, and with that said that that's it uh that's how uh feel free to reach out to me on twitter uh or if you're in the mono game discord you can reach out to me in the mono game discord i'm always happy to answer questions there as well um but with that out of the way uh happy coding and i hope you have a great rest of your night thanks hey everyone um editor note here i did actually forget to mention something uh, toward the end of the video so i'm adding this in kind of at in post um but when working with modern game in vs code you do not get uh one of the features that you have with visual studio which is opening the content that mgcp mgcb file by double clicking it if you do that in vs code it's just going to open it like this and that that doesn't help you because you obviously don't want to edit this file manually uh, you want to use the MGCB editor to do that. Uh, so in order to edit that file or to open, the MG, open that file with the MGCB editor, what you can do is open the terminal. And then from the terminal, let me clear this. From the terminal, just type .NET MGCB editor. And then we're going to do uh, forward slash content. Oh, wait, I'm not in the folder. Hold on. <laughs> Let me see the, my awesome game. There we go. Uh, so when we're in the project folder, you do .NET uh, MGCB editor uh, forward slash content and then content.mgcb. You enter that command and I'll put that command down below in the description of the video as well if you want to copy and paste it from there. Uh, entering that command will tell the MGCB the editor to open and to open using that content in .mgcb file. So you can see it opens here like that. Um, there are extensions in VS Code that, uh, there's two of them actually, that people have made in order to allow you to click to open them. Oh, let me search for them real quick. Or maybe there's only one, maybe the other one got removed. Um, I do believe though that these extensions, if you, if you use them, uh, I'm not sure if this extension requires you to install it globally because it says if you need old global version of MGCB editor um as that information there if for some reason you download this extension and it needs you to have it installed globally even though it says right here without a global tool which is cool uh, do not use an extension that tells you that it has to be a global tool the MGCB editor starting with 3.8.1 um, is no longer installed as a global tool um but if you'd like you can you can download this extension because this does say without it being a global tool and you can use this extension i'm assuming it would just allow you to double click and open as well uh otherwise i'm used to using the command line so i can just open a terminal and type in that i just type that command in to open the mgc editor it's not that big of a deal for me it might be a big deal for you um so feel free to use the extension or to use that command if you want to open the mgc editor and with that quick post edit out of the way, uh, have a great night.